Hey everybody, Eve here. Today I'm going to share one of my favorite recipes with all of you. In case most of you don't know this, living in a tiny space poses its own unique and inherent issues with cooking. Uh, in my case, because I live in a micro tiny space of 80 square feet or even less depending upon how you look at it. I only sleep in my bed a certain amount of hours every night so during the day I'm not actually using that square footage so you can it's kind of debatable as to how much actual square, square feet I live in at any given time so we won't digress on that subject that much but as you can see I have a very small space for cooking, extremely small. I have a tiny refrigerator. This is my prep area in a nutshell. If I want to add uh, some tr serving trays or cutting boards or something over here to where my bed is, I'm sure I could increase that area, but let's face it, when it comes to preparing certain types of foods, if you're dicing onions or you know, you're working with pickles and lots of other things that kind of have, you know, lots of juices and, and, you know, stuff like that. You know, basically just, you know, cutting, chopping, and preparing, it's a little complicated because you just have a tiny space. So I've decided to create a tiny space or homesteading menu or recipes. Menu of recipes. <laughs> That's, da. <laughs> To, for people that live in tiny spaces and want to find uh, easier recipes that are less messy, less prep involved, but still have that satisfying taste of certain comfort foods we've all come to love and know. And me being a vegetarian, though, there are some um, animal byproducts that I eat as long as they're organic and that would be eggs and certain kinds of cheeses, although I'm starting to lean more towards the, you know, the gluten-free and vegan cheeses, but not completely off of them yet. So we're gonna get off of all of that again because I have a tendency to, to uh, digress, and as Woody Allen would say in his favor favorite line, I'm sort of like a banana. I have a tendency to ripen and then rot. <laughs> Give me enough time, I'll show you. So today's recipe is going to be my, I'm going to call it my homestead deviled eggs. And that's my version of deviled eggs. And I buy my eggs uh, organic and hard boiled from Kroger. I'm sure you can find them. And if you can't find them, and that's just because I don't like to store eggs. I just don't have enough space. I do have a fridge. And if I could, I, if I could find six eggs locally, which I can't, hardly, unless I get them off the farm here, which I do, and, you know, hard boil those. But most of the time I just buy the har organic hard-boiled eggs that's already in the store. It makes it really easy for me. And so I'll take two or how, how many hard-boiled eggs you want. And I also will have my seasonings of choice. In this case, I like really spicy deviled eggs so I've got some chipotle chili organic I have some dill weed organic I have Himalayan pink sea salt and some organic black pepper and then I also get either dill or uh, organic dill or organic bread and butter chips from Kroger so the first thing you'll want to do is get your eggs that are already hard boiled and I take my little knife and uh, oh, and another thing, if you're buying the eggs already hard boiled, you'll need to take a paper towel and pat them dry because you don't want slimy, wet, hard boiled eggs to work with. And the first thing you're going to do is slice them with your sharp little knife. Be very careful. Don't want to lose a finger doing this. Cut them right in half as I'm, I hope you guys can see because I do not have a camera assistant at this time so maybe that's going to happen in the future but right now I don't have one so just exercise caution and then I 
And then I, I'll show you how I clean up as I go. You also take a paper towel, <clears throat> take your vinegar and water pre-made solution, and then clean that knife once you're finished. Because it's nice and clean. You could reuse it for the next little recipe. And then I store it right under there. And I put this right back. Or made a little bit of mess like I have already. Because it's inevitable in a tiny space and you're making a recipe. You get food all over the place, just like you do in a traditional home. And then as you can see, when I open my window, and because I have a trash can on the outside of the window that's bungeed to my rig, boom, I throw that right out there. You don't have to throw trash in a small trash container in my tiny space that would smell in no time. Okay, so now we have, as you can see, and I'll show you the beautiful, perfectly cooked hard-boiled eggs. And now I'm going to season them. Color is a thing for me, so I like the chipotle peppers for the red. You just take that, and, and now everything you do from here on in is going to be to taste. If you don't like my, the particular seasonings that I've chosen, like the chipotle peppers, don't use them. You use what you like. And then I have the dill weed, organic dill weed, and I'm going to put... This gets my little green, although the pickles are going to cover everything. Because my pickles, the best I save for last, go last. And then once I have my dill weed, as you can see, it's dill weed. Maybe I should show you guys all of these. Because maybe you would like to make mine. So the first seasoning is the Chipotle Chili by McCormick. They have a, yeah, it is McCormick uh, organic brand. That's the Chipotle. The chipotle chili has the dill weed and that's by or that's um you know what guys i think that's by walmart walmart has their own organic right and you'll know it because you'll always see the bright purple in the logo so that's and then this is just himalayan pink sea salt that i've put in my own salt shaker um Buy whatever sea salt, organic, you know, or pink Himalayan, or I don't care as long as it's organic, and then organic pepper. And then the pickles are made by Kroger, and they are the, the organic um, Simple Truth bread and butter chips. And I like to put, a, an, an, I devote an entire chip per half egg slice, so make sure you <clears throat> knead out enough, or measure out, enough pickles to cover your eggs. And as you can see, when I started, each egg is just a hard-boiled egg. I just want you guys to be able to follow along so that you can create this recipe exactly. You just, so you season them the way you want to. Now next, I've, you know, I've already put on the chipotle chili and the dill weed, so now I'm going to go one, two, two shakes. I like things... Not too salty, but I like to taste salt. So one, two, one, two, one, two per egg. And then for pepper, I just go one, two, three, four. Then the piece de la resistance. Oh, and I dry these off too with a paper towel. I don't like things sliding around on my food. So then that's what you do last. You add your dill pickles. And then I guess if you wanted to get really fancy, this is another thing I do. Although this makes them a little more difficult to eat, a little messier because it hits the floor from time to time, is fresh gourmets, crispy onions, garlic pepper, and they are really, 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 really good in non-GMO. I get those at Kroger as well. I don't know where you could find those locally, but these are really nice. <coughs> Excuse me, still have the plague. Still fight the plague, folks, after all this time. Always sounds like crap. So just sprinkle a few of those. You guys won't believe how gourmet and delicious this actually is. And if you wanted to, you could put some shaved organic Parmesan cheese on top. You know, just put whatever you personally love. Um, deviled eggs are... This is just really 
so good. Put that back up there, out of the way. <laughs> Hopefully, I won't drop anything on my head. So that's it, folks. This is the finished result of my homestead devil eggs. Perfect for tiny spaces where preparation is a problem. And as you can see, everything was done on a single tiny bamboo cutting board. And that's it. You just lay everything out, what you want. And then <clears throat> the best I saved for last. Oh. Mm. Crunchy. <laughs> or not crunchy, depending upon your personal taste. But anyway, I'm definitely going to eat the rest of those when this camera is off. So thank you for joining me today as I prepared this special recipe. And that's another thing. Since I'm dealing primarily with food in my mouth, <laughs> tiny spaces, and living in tiny spaces, I'm going to be creating some more quick recipes like that for people. Because I want to help in any way that I can. And I realized early on in this tiny space, tiny house journey, that there would be a lot of things I would have to tackle individually, as an individual, to address some basic preacher comforts that I personally love <clears throat> or have to have, a way of living that I have to maintain. And one of them was comfort foods that are impossible or were impossible, especially before I had a fridge to even create in my tiny space. So that's what I'm trying to do. Create recipes and overcome obstacles in tiny spaces and tiny houses so that we can all thrive and live beautifully and with comfort, security, ease, and grace. That's what it's all about. I share, you share, we all flourish, we grow as a community, and that's what it's all about, community, at the end of the day. So, that's it for today. May Christ bless each and every one of you most abundantly. And while you're here, please thumbs up, comment on, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And while you're subscribing, be sure to ring that notification bell. So you'll know when I have or upload a new video. Thanks. Until next time, this is Eve. Eat those deviled eggs. They are so good. Put what you want on them. It's whatever you want. I'm not a dictator. It's up to you. Bye.